I remember that you said that senescent cells are heterogeneous, right? They're, they're not all the same. Yeah. So yeah. Are, are some of them more harmful than others? And, and does it, it, does it depend on the tissue they came from or what drove them into senescence? All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite a surprise to us because we did some of these early studies, but also to the field that if you take genetically identical human cells, say put them in culture, so they're in an identical environment. Now, add something like ionizing radiation or a drug that makes them senescent, and then monitor each of those individual senescent cells and ask how similar are they to each other. The big surprise is that they fall into distinct categories, quite a few, like more than a dozen distinct categories. We still don't completely understand what it is that dictates why some cells would adopt this pattern of gene expression, whereas the same genetically identical cell in the same drug in the same environment ad adopts a different pattern of gene expression. Now, the question you ask is, can we say some of them are good and some of them are bad. We would love to be able to say that, but honestly, we don't yet know that for sure. That's the hypothesis that I think many labs are working on now, is that there are good guys and bad guys. The question is, can a good guy become a bad guy? Can a bad guy become a good guy? Do they change? We know they change over time, certainly in culture, but even in vivo, we know that. So there are huge, huge, big unanswered questions, basic biology questions that many labs are pursuing now because we want the drugs to be as safe as possible. We want to be able to develop a senolytic, a magic senolytic, targets only the bad guys, and it doesn't matter whether they get there over time or whether they were there to begin with, to begin with. but we don't yet know how to do that. We, we really don't. Okay, so when we say the, the cells are different, we're, what we're really referring to is that they have different, that they I secrete dis different versions of SASP. It, yeah. It, it, yeah, that, that's kind of the difference, okay. Because they're secreting different molecules, exactly. They have a different pattern of gene expression and those genes encode proteins that are secreted. So they're secreting different things, yes. Okay, so, do we know, so we kind of talked about the accumulation. So I, I believe that when you're young, right, um, your immune system clears up senescent cells, but when you get older, then it doesn't. So do we see it as essentially because the immune system is not so functional or is there some other reason we think behind the accumulation? That, that's a great question. So the first answer is we do think, we meaning the field, not just us, but many, labs feel there is a role for the immune system. Immune competence declines with age. And so it is entirely possible that um, the immune system becomes less efficient at eliminating senescent cells um, as we get older. But we don't think that's the entire answer. And, and the reason is, first of all, the immune system is extremely complex. Um, we're fine, I mean, this is another new um, uh, pioneering field in aging research is understanding the role of the immune system. Some parts of the immune system decline with age, but other parts actually become hyperactive. This is what we call inflammaging. You may have heard that term. It was coined by Claudio Franceschi, who is a very good um, biogerontologist in Italy, and he coined this term inflammaging. And what we meant by that is that if you took a biopsy from say the liver of a 16 year old and a 60 year old, and you give that biopsy blindly to a pathologist, say, okay, which came from the young person, which came from the old person? Pathologists would immediately be able to tell you who came from the old person. And what the pathologist would look for are two things. First, that pathologist would look at the structure of the tissue because tissue structure changes with age, it degrades with age. And the other thing 
is the pathologist would look for infiltration of certain immune cells into the tissue, low level infiltration. We call that inflammation and he called it inflammaging because it's very common in aged tissues. So why is inflammation bad? Well, first of all, let me say like everything else in biology, there's a good and a bad. So the good thing is you will never heal a wound without an initial inflammatory response. Inflammation starts the healing process. In a young, healthy organism, it starts and then it stops. It knows to stop. In an aged tissue, it continues weekly. And what that does is those immune cells, which are designed to kill a possible invading organism, they kill by making toxic molecules. And so when you have low level infiltration of those immune cells, that tissue is exposed to low level toxic molecules, DNA damaging molecules, cell damaging molecules, low level, but persistent. And this is why inflammation is considered a big risk factor for many, many age related diseases, including ironically, late life cancer. Now, the other thing that inflammation does is the, um, the molecules that call those immune cells to the tissue are made by senescent cells. And those molecules, independent of the immune system, can also change the way normal cells function. For example, some molecules that would call an immune system to a tissue can also prevent stem cells from dividing. So now you have a tissue that is infiltrated with immune cells that are damaging and also are exposed to molecules from senescent cells that are telling the stem cells don't divide. This is not good. This, mm. is, this is really what eventually leads to the degradation of the tissue and what we call age-related disease. So we think that by eliminating senescent cells, we can eliminate those molecules that are preventing stem cells from functioning, but also we can prevent this inflammation, which is causing the damage. That's not proven, that is the hypothesis. And it's the rationale behind developing drugs that will kill senescent cells.